When we left, everything was beautiful. I should sing that song. But in the best laid plans, we have a pipe over in, well, in the Family Life Center that's in the ceiling. And now the gym is full of water all across the whole thing. And that all transpired since we left here this afternoon. But we've got it cut off and you're getting no wet back and we're backing up. So uh, those groups that are there, they'll get here for the 11 o'clock service. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're there tonight. So I want to thank you. I received a phone call today from one of our members and asking me tonight to remember her family in prayer. And there are a lot of our families tonight that we need to lift up in prayer. So before we start this wonderful evening of carols and candles and communion, and before Omar the night visitor appears, let us pray. Almighty God, this is a season, a season that we think of as being enjoyed, but yet we realize that in some areas and in some families, this is a dark night. And we ask your blessings upon all those families that this evening are suffering from loss, suffering from disaffiliation from their families and being with us. We ask you to bless all of those and we give praise for those that tonight is having a family Christmas Eve. For all of this, we give you thanks because you walk with us no matter where we're walking. <laughs> so we ask you now to bless all those families, those that are suffering and those, even those that are joyful this evening. Bless us all. In your name we pray. Amen. But tonight for communion, uh, it will be at the chancel. Uh, you're free to come when the ushers will show you how to get there. And uh, we'll have bread. And it'll be broken. But also, for those of you that are wanting to be a little more careful of that, we have a disposable communion chalice, all right? And then if we get to the point, I'll show you. And if you want those, the ushers will bring those to you as well. So when we get to the communion part, we'll get there and have everything set up for that. And with that, the bell says it's time to start. So hand out.
Will you please rise for the entry of the light? Tonight is the night that we've been waiting for. The Advent wreath is complete with the Christ candle in the center. And we hear these words, For unto us a child is given, unto us a Savior is born, and the order of the world will be upon his shoulders. And with the birth of Christ, our lives are centered, focused, turned toward God. And so we light this candle because Christ is the center of our lives. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you, God, you come to us in Jesus. And on this night, we celebrate the birth of Christ. And let the power of Christ come into our hearts that we might find peace with you forever. Amen. You may be seated. Eighty percent. Is it on? Is the mic on? Eighty percent. It's the first one. It's the first one. What's the first one? Angels. Okay.
Leave it. This one. <laughs> Sorry.
wipes the desk while I go to the bar and check on things in the stall. <laughs> oh, you're out here before me, huh? Okay, well, I'll tell you what, you go right ahead. I'll let Jacob go sit back in the dark a while. How's that? Just a little early. <laughs> checking out the barn and making sure all the stalls were taken and all the hay was out and 
animals were all watered and ready down for the evening. I got to looking at this thing. There's a great history behind this. The history that goes back. My dad was the innkeeper, which I am now. But I was pretty handy at woodwork. And I was taking woodworking in the woodworking shop of Rabbi Simeon's. When I was about, oh, 13, 14, somewhere along in there. I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was because it isn't fair to you. But as I was working in the shop, I remember it as clear as yesterday. Rabbi Simeon says, okay guys, it's time to shut it down for the day. And all of them hooked up their aprons and dusted off the sawdust and I was still working. And finally he said, Jacob! And I said, oh yeah, what Rabbi Simeon? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. He said, it's time to fold things down. I'm going to be gone for about three days. And what you got to do is, while well, I'm gone those three days, you have access to the workshop to finish all your product, projects that you're doing. And in doing so, uh, whoever comes back, I've got a nephew that lives in Nazareth, and he's going to come. He's a carpenter. He's a master carpenter. And he's going to help me judge who does the best job on the best project from the wood shop working in the wood. Boy, I heard that and I thought, what you gonna get, Rabbi? He said, the winner gets to help me build the new synagogue. I thought, well, you know, I'd like to be able to do that. That's what I'd like to do. So I said, okay. So I went home to my dad and as I was leaving, Rabbi Simeon says, tell your dad I hope that this inn is full for the whole next week. And I said, yeah, I'm sure he will. Rabbi, I'll tell him so, and I'm sure he's thankful. So I got there, and I told the dad, I said, Father, I'll work for you on my work on my project in the mornings, and then I'll work in the end, in the afternoons and evenings. And so I did for the next couple of days. And I was working at it, because I had an idea. I really had it all put together. I wanted to make a feeding trough that could be rolled so that you wouldn't have to lift it and carry it everywhere. And I was putting it all together and as you can see, I got to working on it. And about that third day, I was just absolutely worn out. I'd been working on my project and I'd been helping my dad with the end, taking care of everything and all the, the customers that were coming and going, cleaning up and everything. And I got in the, out in my shop and I thought, gosh, I'm tired. I think I'll just sit down here for a minute and close my eyes. And the next thing I knew, there was this bright light in my face and it woke me up. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's morning. I've slept all night. And then I realized I hadn't. Coming through a crack in the wall of the barn, was this bright light, this star shining. And so I went outside and I said, you know, this is weird. So I went outside and looked and there was this star and it seemed to be dancing over the stable. And I looked and what? And while I was out there looking, I heard a strange sound that you don't normally hear coming from a stall. It was the voice of a baby crying. And so I went and peeped through the slats in the stall and there was on the floor, on the barn floor, a pile of hay and a baby lying on that pile of hay. And I thought, wow. And about that time, I said, you know, that baby needs to be in something off the floor. Well, the next day, Rabbi Simeon was back. And as he came in, I said, Rabbi Simon, he said, Jacob, just, just, just cool it. I've got some other things. I'll get back to you. But then he said, but where's your project? And I said, that's what I'm trying to tell you, Rabbi. And about that time, through the door, this gentleman comes through and he says, Uncle Simeon. 
And Rabbi Simeon says, oh, Joseph, come on in. And he says, Joseph, I'd like you to meet one of my students, Jacob. And Joseph said, I've already met Jacob. He said, you have? He said, yes. He's given my son his first gift. He said, really? He said, yeah, he gave me a manger to put him in. And so he said, a manger? Where is your son? He said, come on, I'll show you. So he led us past my father's inn and took us out into the stables and there was the baby and just fabulous. And Joseph said, see, and the mother was there and the baby was there. Rabbi Simeon looked at me and he said, now I see why you didn't have your project finished. And he said, why did you do that? And I said, well, Rabbi, you taught me that if I give a gift to a child of God, you give the gift to God. And he said, yes, Jacob, that is true. And that's what you've done. And so I look at this old manger sitting here. It's got old straw and hay in it. It doesn't have his wheels on it though. It didn't get finished. I never got around to that. You don't have those kind of problems, I hope. But I didn't finish it, but I got to thinking more about it. Rabbi Simeon is correct. When you and I give a gift to someone, a child of God, we give God a gift as well. And this manger has even been a bed for a king. Merry Christmas. All right, Brother Rick. Right around with this. Battery 80%. Connected to Lisa Red and Lisa Apple Watch. Go through that again, sorry.
And suddenly a great company of angels as they sang glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to those who be favored. When the angels have left, those shepherds said, Hey, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass. Now, we can't get to Bethlehem, but we can come to the chancel and share our hearts and minds with communion this day. I ask the communion stewards to come and sit. I told you there was uh, those who wished to take a, a chalice. The top has the juice, the bottom has the bread. To get to it, you just pull the bottom off and let the bread drop into your hand. And then after you've taken the bread, open the top and take of the juice. Now, if you want this, Doug is here to make sure that you get one. Otherwise, we will serve it. And those who cannot come to the chancel, please let Doug know so we will bring it to you as well. More than 30 years after you witnessed the major scene. There was another scene that ties into our hearts and in our minds today. That night in the upper room, there with his disciples, his last night, and he broke bread. And as he broke it, he gave thanks, as we do this evening as we offer this bread up to Almighty God. Father, we ask your blessings upon this bread and the partaking of it, that as we take it, we feel the presence of your Holy Spirit dwell within us and lift us as you did your son that evening so long ago. And we ask your thanks. Amen. And likewise, he took the cup, and when he had filled it, he lifted it up and said, Father, bless this juice, for it is the lifeblood that removes all doubt and all sins and all the things that bother us. And as we partake of it this day, it is blessed for us as God blessed it for him that evening. And we give thanks, Almighty God. The Lord's table is now open to all who wish to serve and be served and come. And let's do it in a rather orderly fashion. Go around this way and then you can exit out this way. So come on in. Come on.
While these kids are bowed and others are waiting in line, those of you that have the chalice and you want to partake, open it up and let's bless it. This is the bread to represent the body of Christ. Eat and give thanks. And this is the juice, symbolizing all of the sins that are washed away. Drink and give thanks. Amen. Almighty God, we give thanks this day. As we gather here around this chancel, on this night, so important to us in our lives. For this is the night we celebrate what a marvelous thing you did for us by giving us your son. And we give thanks. And may we leave this place singing, Hallelujah, or rise and go in peace. And may his peace go with you. Amen. As you hear the music playing in the background, it says Christ was born for this. This is what it's for. Give thanks for every moment. And may you go in peace. And may the peace of Christmas go with you as you rise from this place. In his holy name we pray. Amen.
close the table. Was anyone missing? Can we say amen? Let us pray. Oh my God, what a year. What a time for us. The times I'm sure that we, Lord, have been down, but you've lifted us up. There are times we've been short tempered, but you've given us honey in which to speak and give us sugar upon our lips that we may know each other because that's what this season is all about and the reason for it is what you've done for us giving us your son and the life that he gave for us removing all of our sins and washing us white as snow and it is this time we give you thanks as we celebrate this marvelous day as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I will speak in the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I know you all know Silent Night. You can probably sing it without even having to have music. So Doug and then pass the light to all. And will you sing? Silent night. Come on. It's on your notes there. If you don't know it, sing. you're singing as you go together. Come on. Right. Holy
just too far away from the phone. It's Bluetooth. It's just too far away. Sorry. Can you get your stuff on me? Huh? Can you get your stuff? I know it's your stuff. Yeah. It fail. You scared me too. <laughs> Thank you.